Hi, this is the third part, modeling by example, travel request. In case you haven't checked out the first two videos, please see the links below in the description and uh, start with those. Since in this video, we are going to start where we left off last time. So we have already a case with three different stages, defined travel data, approved travel, and organized travel. Now in those stages, we have basically um, in the first stage, the possibility to define all our travel data and then eventually file it for approval. And now we are going to look uh, about the approved travel stage. And in the approved travel stage, we are going to start the process. So let's just add a process task here and call that, um, so call that travel request uh, approval process. We are going to create a new process, travel request approval process. And in this process, we are going to start with pools and lanes. Pools and lanes are a way to structure um, your process and visualize who is responsible for doing what. So travel request approval process is how we are going to call our pool. And then we are going to in so two lanes, one is the um, travel approver. Let's use the bottom lane for that. The other one is the travel requester. You can just double click basically on those lanes to change the name or when you single uh, click actually on the lane, then you can change also the name here on the um, right side. Whenever it basically starts, it's in the context of the travel requester. So let's put in uh, our start event in there. Now, I have the uh, stretch tool here already um, selected. So those two lines with the arrows to the left and the right, and you can use that to make now more space uh, in your diagram. For me, it's basically uh, make the pools and lanes larger, but I'm just going to place my cursor above those and then slowly drag and drop it um, by holding the key to the right and uh, as long as I would like to basically have my process. For now, we are going to have simply two uh, user-driven tasks in there. So the first task is going to be uh, select approver for our travel request. And then we are going to add a second uh, user task, which is coming after that. Uh, that is the actual approve travel request, uh, which then our approver needs to do. And then after that, we are going to have a simple end event in here. Now, uh, with that, I just need to go ahead and fill out basically the responsible persons in here. So with that, I can decide uh, what is going to happen. So that's the initiator, which is the actual person uh, using or creating that process. So with that, we are fine. We only need to set here that this should come from our root or parent uh, basically case. So since our process is started as a sub-process, we would like to have here root.initiator, which references the initiator variable from this case. While on this case, we defined here on the um, case itself that the initiator variable is initiator, and that's how that variable is pre-filled with the name of the person who started this case. Now, um, when I work on the select approver for travel request, I can go ahead and add a new form, select approver uh, for travel request. And in here, I am going ahead and uh, first of all, add a description so that we can use a text display. Uh, please select the approver for your travel request. This could be either your supervisor or project manager, depending on your profile. And let's make this here bold. And with that, we have now a little headline. And below that, we are going to use now the person selection. So below selection, you have a 
person selection, which is actually a select single behind the scenes, only that you have a lot of things pre-filled. So let's just call that um, approval. And we just call that here the variable approval ID. And uh, we have here pre-filled and rest endpoint, which is basically doing a uh, lookup or uh, has an endpoint configured for searching for all users. And it also configured basically that it is using the display name to display that person at the end. Now with that, we have the possibility to select an approver and we can go back to our process inside the approved travel request to then decide in here that we would like to have as an assignee the approver ID for the next task. It automatically recommends here that we could use the variable approver ID which is actually coming from, um, from the form which we have over here. Now let's just add here a new approval form. That approval form is going to um, have be in here basically a headline. So let's just say we have a text display here. Um, please review the travel request and either approve or decline. Let's make review bold. And now we could go ahead and say, we also would like to see what we are going to approve. I think that is uh, pretty useful. So here we can use a subform and that subform we can specify now as a reference, uh, our uh, travel request work form, since that contains all the information which we have about that. Now, when we look at that, those are uh, just containing two additional forms. But when we look at uh, those fields, all of them are just stored on our case level. And our approval form is now on the um, level of the, um, of the process. With that, we need to go ahead and uh, use the same trick, basically what we have done before when we selected the initiator. Or we could also say here, please review the travel request. And then here uh, we can also say root.travel subject, which should be uh, basically the title of our travel and that we could uh, also make bold. Uh, and then we always need to have basically that root prefix. And when we use a subform, we can do that as well. We can just say we would like to have the subform data stored in a single variable. And with that, we reference the root prefix. Uh, normally, we wouldn't like that the reviewer is able to change anything on the travel request. So we can check that uh, checkbox here for um, disabled. And we could add a multi-line text field with some review comments uh, in here that the uh, reviewer can fill those out. We still need to have a possibility that a reviewer can say yes or no. And therefore, when you click outside, you have the outcomes here uh, on the right side where we can now say we would like to add a new outcome. And one uh, once of those outcomes is approved travel, uh, which is going to have the uh, value approved. That is always possible why we then have a decline travel with the uh, value declined which is basically only enabled in case we do have review comments since in case it's declined, we would like to know why as well. Okay, let's save that. And with that, we have now our, um, our form with the approved travel. We could also call that review result in here as a variable. And now we can go back to our case and say we would like to use the review result in here. Now we could pass now out from the process task, our review result that we have that process variable available as a case variable. So let's just say we are taking the review result here as an output parameter. And uh, with that, we are now able to use the review result also in here. So let's say our organized travel stage should be only available when the review result is going to be equals uh, to 
approved. When it is uh, declined, in that case, we obviously wouldn't like to have the approved. Now, um, there are, when you use those conditions, two different trigger modes and event deferred just means that the um, condition needs to be true at any time before we reach um, that uh, specific sentry, uh, while when we go on event, then it needs to be true uh, in case we are coming here. The advantage is that it will not that often evaluate that expression when we go for on event, and we view result wouldn't need to exist basically before our event. When we use that uh, vars colon equals expression, um, it is not required that review result exists before. Now with that, we have in our case an optional stage. And when we have an optional stage, then we need to go ahead and mark our outer stage as autocomplete. Otherwise, in case we decline our case, um, the case might not uh, complete. Now let's save that and publish it then. Once published, we can go to flow work and we go to start our next travel request. So I'm going to travel to Paris for an important customer meeting. I'm right now in Zurich. I want to go to Paris. Let's start next week and I'm going to return end of next week. And now I have my travel request submitted. I'm going to use public transportation. I have a GA. I always would like to have breakfast. Estimated cost are 1,200. I don't have any special requirements. And let's directly uh, file for approval. Now we have here and select approval for travel request. Now we can go ahead and select here, uh, maybe Shane Bone as our approver. And we can complete that now. We see that approved travel request is assigned to Shane Bone. And I can sign out and sign in with Shane Bone. In case you have um, impersonation enabled, you can also use impersonation. When I now go to tasks, I see that Shane Bone has the task approve travel and decline travel uh, here available. And um, you see actually that I just made that condition the wrong way. So we can only decline when we do not have any review comments. Let's quickly go ahead and uh, go to our approval form and here we say okay only in case review comments is basically not empty or uh, does exist and we would like to have the decline therefore I can now um, or would now need to create a new one so let's approve that travel request here now uh, it always ends in this case and when we sign out and go back to our admin user, we can just start a, a new travel request. So let's just start another one. And here, travel Paris. Travel notes, I don't add this time. So like Paris and next week again. And Wait, uh, that one. Now I would like to have hotel with breakfast, 1200. And when I file now for approval, I have to select approval. Let's uh, actually let's select the admin user for now that I don't need to sign in and out again. We see now the approved travel is basically uh, here, not uh, activated. The decline travel is not activated. This is not a good price. And now we can decline the travel. You don't see actually too much difference here uh, since everything ended. And uh, with that, we also reach the end of our uh, case. And with that, we also reach the end of our demo. So we have now executed those two travel requests. And in the next video, we are actually going to look at um, what the organized travel stage is going to bring us and how we can build out that stage. So thank you very much for joining and see you next time.